hey y'all welcome back to my channel i know i haven't been here in so long but i am back y'all no worries and i also have a few videos already ready to upload and ready for y'all to view okay we're gonna come back strong we're gonna come back consistent and we're just gonna come back period <laughs> Right now, I'm just going in with my sanding band to remove all of that shine. I'm also going in the cuticle area, slightly pushing the cuticle area up. Not too much because you don't want to dig into her skin. But me doing this kind of like alleviate having to use a cuticle pusher. Now, there is no problem with using a cuticle pusher. I just don't. Um, during my trial and error as far as trying to get my timing right like this set right here only took me an hour you know so I tried to come up with different ways or try different things to make my time go a little bit faster while still giving them quality nails because these nails are going to last her at least I want to say like five six weeks usually my clients with the short to medium longish nails they'll last for like six weeks and then, like my extra long sets, the ones who don't, you know, do a lot of manual labor, those tend to last six weeks to four, I'll say four to six weeks for my long to extra long sets and stuff like that. But yeah, during my little trial and error of trying different things, you'll see in my videos, uh, some things are slightly different from my old videos, but Yo, I, I pretty much do the same thing. I pretty much use the same stuff. <laughs> right now, I'm going in with my cuticle bit, and I'm just getting in there to clean all of that dead skin that's still attached to the nail bed. Now, I'm being very careful. My electric drill is set to about 5,000 RPM. It'll be around four to 5,000. Usually, it just depends. Sometimes, I'll even drop down to 1,000 if they come in with you know the very thin nail beds and get to jumping around and things like that i'll try to turn i'll turn it all the way down you know and sometimes they'll still be jumping but you know at that point i'll be like girl you know you you signed up for this <laughs> you knew your nails was a nailing to come get them done but you know me personally i'm not gonna tell them no the only type of nails that i won't do is nails that got infections or things like that or if they don't even have a nail you know <laughs> sometimes they will try to come in with no nail y'all but i just respectfully tell them no you know you gotta tell them no sometimes you'll be like girl you, you're, gonna have to, you're gonna have to take a break you gotta take a break before you come up in my chair i can't have you jumping around you know it's not like i'm trying to get you in and out but i'm trying to get you in and out you know if you're jumping around moving you know yanking your hand back girl that's added at least only 20 minutes you know <laughs> I mean, that's how i be feeling but yeah so you know just take your time be real gentle now I'm going in with my cuticle nippers. Now this is just to remove all of that dead skin that is built up at the cuticle area. Some clients will come in with build up on the cuticle, some won't. So you probably won't even have to use these. Some will even come with just a little bit like on the corners. It really just depends. Everybody is different. But I do take this extra step to make sure that all of that dead skin is removed. Um, it also helps with keeping the acrylic from flooding. Because once it touch, I feel like if you have all of that extra skin and it touches it, it automatically kind of just goes into the cuticle. So this kind of prevents that. And make sure you are very gentle, very careful. Because you don't want to cut too far. She will bleed.
Now I'm applying the tips and these 3XL tips, I got these off of Amazon. Everything will be linked in the description box down below. And these are my go-to tips for everything. I do have some pre-coffin uh, tips, but these are the ones that I pretty much use majority of the time. Now I'm going in, I'm cutting her nail tips to the size that she would like. Now in order to keep all the nails about the same size, I kind of just bend the middle finger to the ring and the pointer to get it aligned as much as possible to make sure that it is even. Now I do see people using the nail tip cutter and the magnets. Um, I thought about trying that method. I will if you guys would like to see that, but I kind of like cutting the tips. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna lie. I would rather do this. Now I'm going back in with my sanding band. This part is really just to make the nail tip flush with the actual nail bed. I won't actually take it all the way down and sand the entire nail tip. It's not really called for. In my opinion, it's really just for looks as like you're prepping and stuff. And, you know, it looks nice. But, you know, guys, it's not really called for. You just really want to focus on the nail tip and the nail bed area just to make it flush. Also, hit the sides a little bit so that it's not bulky on the sidewalls as well. Now, I know y'all noticed that I did not shape these tips. I typically don't, especially if my client come in asking for skinny square, tapered square, these tips are pretty much it. You know, you don't have to do any extra work. It's not really called for. And why add extra time, you know? I'm going in with my Mia Secrets dehydrator. This dehydrator, in my opinion, is the truth. I don't know. I've been using this since I've been doing nails. I've been doing this for four years. And it's been doing this thing. And you'll know if you've prepped correctly once you put the dehydrator on and the nail bed comes back ashy. Now, this is the Mia Secrets Bonder. And this is the truth, too, y'all. I've been using these two, <laughs> these same two things for four years, okay? My first bead is going to be placed right below the cuticle. I'm wiping my brush off to get that excess acrylic off. I'm going to push and pat using the body and the tip of my brush while also still making sure that you kind of wipe and pat that extra acrylic out of your brush. Dip it in your monomer to uh, make sure that the acrylic isn't sticking when you get to go patting down and things like that. And this also helps to not rake off all of that acrylic that you just placed. So you wanna be very careful, work with a nice bead. So the bead to monomer ratio that I do, I just kinda, I just kinda dip my brush into the monomer, dip it in the powder. If I feel like it's too wet, then I will dab it into my paper towel that I have. But other than that, Yes, just keep making sure you rake the side walls downward. Use the body of the brush to keep the shape of the nail. And then for my second bead, I'm just going to place it right at the cuticle, not on the cuticle, at the cuticle, and just push it up as far. Now this bead, I do recommend it be a little bit more wet because with some acrylics, I do find that if it's not wet enough, it'll just dry and just be too hard to even like connect to the sidewall and connect to the cuticle. So make sure that this bead is pretty wet. Now, I know y'all can see, but I, I do need a little bit more acrylic in the middle right there to get that apex going. So I'm just gonna get another bead, place it right there. I'm going to rake upward just to kind of get that flush with that apex. You don't want that extra hump. And then I'm going to go to the sidewall to sidewall and just rake it down to fill in that little dip that I had in the nail. And there you have your perfect application. You don't have to do much filing, none of that. So this set that I'm doing right now is part of a special that I have going on where my girlies can come in and get a short to long soft white set 
um, with one accent nail. The accent nail can be any color, have decals, stones, or whatever. Sometimes, if they want, like, a big charm, I don't mind the big charms, but if I'm running low, I'll be like, no, girl, we can't do that. Well, we got to do something else, you know, because depending on where I got those charms from, it might take forever for them to come in, and I might need that. I might need that tomorrow, you know? <laughs> But, you know, it's been really fun. You know, my newcomers, just give my newcomers a chance to come in and try me out to figure out if they go love it here. You know, they always end up loving it here. And then it gives my other girlies, you know, you know, when you want to get your nails done, but you can't get them done, done. You know, bills come around. You want a little budget. You want to just get something, you know. This is it. This is what you get. And you're going to love it, you know. I do have some girlies who only like to come in when I do specials. Um, so noticing that, no, I did have a point in time where I was doing specials and I noticed that it, nobody was really booking unless I had a special. And it took a little time to like get out of that hole, but I do not recommend doing so many specials. Just do like specials, like holiday, you can do some holiday specials or back to school specials and stuff, but I wouldn't recommend doing a special every single month, you know? Like, maybe, like, every month or two, you know? Put some spacing in it and things like that. Because you want to target, you want to get the audience, you want to get the clients that's going to spend that money when you don't have a special. In my opinion, specials should be, like, a reward. Now, if I'm feeling really good, I'm like, oh, y'all booking, y'all loving, y'all tipping, y'all doing all of this. I'm just going to throw out a special. Boom. You know? You know, like, specials to me should be a reward. You you don't want to just be out here rewarding folks for no reason. You know? That's, that's just, well, that's just me. You may be different, but that's how I go about it. On this one, I kind of flooded the cuticle a bit with this little bead, but that is okay. As long as you work fast enough, you can use the very, very tip. I recommend making your brush flat by wiping it on your paper towel real quick to get the tip of your brush really flat to get in there and kind of like separate that acrylic from the skin.
Now I'm showing you guys how I prep my files. I use a different file and then angle it a little bit so that I'm only filing the edges. So when I get to filing the sidewalls, I'm not cutting into her skin. I also cut them in half because I use a new file for every client and this just saves on having to restock on them. Going in with my file, I'm filing underneath the sidewall and then filing the sidewall. This just kind of gets the nail flush. These are straight tips, so we want to get that straight as possible up underneath that nail. Now, since we applied the acrylic so well in the step before, we don't have to do too much filing when it comes to the sidewalls. We're just kind of just making it a little straighter or a little tapered, I should say. Also, I kind of just focus on the free edge and the tip of the nail. I don't kind of file the base, only if I need to. If I feel like it bulked over to the sidewall where her skin is too much, then I'll kind of file it a little bit. But other than that, I'll use that part for my e-file. Now, I am holding the file in a up and downward motion while also pushing forward and back. Now, I don't know if y'all can tell, but my girly is a little stiff-handed, so I had to keep tapping her, you know? Like, girl, calm down. It's okay. I got you. Just relax. Relax, you know? And it's okay. You do get them um, stiff-handed ones, you know? Just just tell them to relax. Be like, girl, you here pampering yourself. Why your, why your fingers so uptight right now, you know? <laughs> you know? Just, just calm down. <laughs> onto my favorite part, which is e-filing. So I'm going in up under the curve just to make sure it's all nice and curving, you know? Then double tap or just make sure that up underneath is as straight as possible just in case the file didn't get it. Now, again, since we applied these acrylics down so well, we don't have to do much filing at all. Honestly, this part for me is just me kind of filing away that top casting that it looks like it looks shiny almost after you apply the acrylic. So I'm really just kind of shaving it off and making sure that the entire nail is flush with each other and my main focus is really just the tip and the cuticle area of the nail and since we did not file the tip i go in with my e-file and this does just makes it so much straighter i don't even waste my time touching the tip of the nail with the file anymore i just <laughs> I just get the file in the sidewalls and then hit the tip with the e file You get that nice clean crisp cut Sometimes my clients even be like hey girl Can you kind of like shave up underneath the little tip the little edges because they're a little sharp, you know You know it, it do its thing and, and it, it works every single time. Okay, but shapey shaping <laughs> Shapey shaping Another tip for when you are getting a new tapered drill bit, I recommend that you taper the sides. And what I mean is by turning your e-file on a low setting and then holding the very edge of the tip right on a file. And it'll kind of get rid of that sharp edging. So when you get really, really close to her cuticle, it won't hurt, it won't cut, it won't nip. It won't make her bleed or none of that. It'll kind of just, it'll just run against the cuticle. But make sure, I recommend that you also kind of do baby taps on like, you can use your hand or sometimes I use my fingertip. I'll, I'll use my fingertip to see if it's still sharp. And then I'll keep kind of like tapering the very tip of my bit so we don't have no problems guys you don't want to cut them you want your client to come back you know you don't want to get all edward's sister hands on her and then she go tell the friends like no oh, i went there 
and I got cut up. You don't want to go there, you know? So just take really, really good care of your clients. I promise they'll come back, especially if you got good vibes. Talk to them, get to know them. Now, sometimes, I'm not going to lie, I'm not like that all the time, especially for my clients that come early in the morning. Girl, I'm still asleep. I don't know what you want me to talk about, but I am still asleep. <laughs> But I will say, out of all of the four years that I've been doing nails, it's been great. I've met new people, had some new little experiences and things like that. You know, it's been fun. I absolutely have no complaints. And I promise, I promise, I promise, I promise, I'm going to be consistent. I'm going to be here for you guys. I'm going to hear, I'm going to be here to talk to you guys, you know. So if there's anything you guys would like to see, anything you guys would like me to talk about during my videos, that is okay with me. I'm going to take that step to make sure that I do a voiceover in every single one of my videos now. <laughs> because back then I was getting real lazy, you know. It's real quick to, you know, edit a nail video, pop some background music, and then upload it, you know. But I find, like, I connect with you guys more if I talk to y'all and things like that.
The glue that I'm using is the Mucart Rhinestone Glue. Now, I swear by this glue. I love this glue. It's been doing its thing. The rhinestones stay on, all that good stuff. I got this charm off of Amazon. The link will be in the description. I appreciate y'all for watching my video. I can't wait to see y'all in my next. Y'all have a great day, ladybugs.